that would uh, take take a long time, but I want to make sure. Oh, yeah. So let's what I've done here, uh, let, me, let me flip it around. I'll pull this out. Yeah. Okay. I've got to the situation since I've been collecting 3D well, uh, collecting 3D. 3D printers that I now can actually decommission 3D printers. So this is my very first 3D printer that I built. It's, a, it's actually a PrinterBot original. When PrinterBot was actually totally open source and you could go on to Thingiverse and get all the files, this is what you can build. By the way, it's a very, it's extremely nice robot. Uh, there are some problems with it, but it's amazing considering that it's got it's got uh, imperial threaded rods and it's kind of a mishmash between uh, metric and non-metric and all of this other stuff it really worked pretty good <laughs> I mean, it does really nice stuff so but anyway so there is a contest going on right now called robot art and there it's it's an international contest and they, so the Steve Rainwater, myself, and Ray are trying to get something to go. And we have to, we have to announce our team by April 1st. We have to submit our artwork by April 15th. So, you know, if it doesn't make it, we'll, we'll know ahead of time. But, so you can see here, I've created a, 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 a palette basically for uh, watercolors, so we haven't actually tried watercolors. Uh, you can see we've put, uh, there's a, uh, we are using the, the hot end extruder here. We modified it to have a platform across it so that it's now a, a now it's now a, a, a brush, brush thing, so this thing is capable of doing this motion. All right. And it also obviously can do up and down and around. We really haven't, so we're in the process of trying to develop, figure out strokes. But what is a paint stroke? Uh, right now, our, our, we, we, we figured out a way to take uh, an image and turn it into uh, just a black and white bit now. You say, well, what if I had colors? Well, I just have a bitmap of each color. And the guy actually goes on the brush. Let me take the brush off and show you. So what it would do is it would come down uh, and stroke like this. So it's actually, so that it hits, it actually pushes down as it strokes. And then it comes back up. And we allow it to go a total of 12 pixels. And our pixels are two, two millimeters by two millimeters to, uh, to go. So it might stroke like this and go up, go over, stroke, up, go over, and stroke. All right. Now, we've done this with black acrylic paint. And what we found is that the brush really piles up with crud on it. You know, the brush gets gooky with paint. So we're still working with some ideas on that. Um, can you go drag? Can you go try to drag it somewhere? Or you like, can you do that? Like drag it off to the edge? Yeah. Well, if you look at this palette for the, the, the watercolor, you'll see there's a long groove. The intent there was to actually have a folded paper towel. All right. I think with acrylic, we if we continue down that path, we may just stop the printer for 30 seconds, pull out the brush, clean it up, put it back in, and, and go. And here, all right, so here's where we are. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. and yeah. if you look at this closely, you can see that the paintbrush is loaded up down here, yeah. and so that the, our pixel sizes crew. So yeah, up yeah, here, the pixel here. sizes were probably two by two, and down here, they were probably four by four. Yeah. All right, so we have to figure out how to do that. Now, for those who can't quite see this, this yeah, is kind of like cool. where we're going. Yeah. All right. So, so, so anyway, we, it, it looks like this. Now, we don't. 
this might be what we consider a hard sky. If we paint Stop this work. picture with a different type of stroke, it could be a totally different style. Yeah. And so we have to figure out in our own, so the investigating uh, what constitutes a stroke uh, is really starting to get, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty much, a, and this is, by the way, this is all a G-code. So, so it's, uh, in theory, once we figure it out, it's, you know, we can take the image we can take the image and turn it into, we have, we have written the code to take an image like this and turn it into a G-code map within seconds. So it's, that allows us to use the standard 3D, color, 3D, 3D printer software and, and board and everything. The only thing I had to do was take out the hot end, modify the, that gear, and put in a a substitute for the thermistor because normal the normal software won't let you run if you're at totally zero temperature because it assumes that your thermistor is opened up. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so that's where we are. Cool. Kind of cool. Uh, we're working on a Robo Builders night out. Hopefully, uh, uh, we'll go to the by this Tuesday. We'll have a next level. Of, I know that Steve's working on a Perl script to take use this algorithm with a uh, with a, a webcam input. So instead of trying to find a image, we will literally be able to just take an image of something and turn it into it. So we're it, it's coming together better than I had hoped at this time. We still got almost a month and a half, so we'll see how that goes. So you. That's that one. Okay. That's the style called pointillism.